Hello and welcome to the project, The Future of the Digital World. It's a part of Center for Law, Ethic and Digital Technologies at Yaroslav Mudri National Law University Activity. I'm happy to introduce you our today's guest, Dr. Michelle Caron, uh, an Associate Dean of Thousand New Hampshire University Global Campus. Dr. Michelle Caron has a 20 years experience developing training and teaching multiply successful business education and STEM programs. She has also held the leadership position in companies in logistic and retail industries. Uh, her publication includes such topics as a globalization of education, labor market, efficiency, rapidly developing economies and corporate governance. Uh, she has uh, her current research interest uh, that are uh, refugee immigrant education, new education, and alternative learning pathways such as industry recognized, uh, verifiable digital mics. I'm sorry, Yulia, I'm losing bandwidth here. Um, I'm losing you. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, okay, so our today's topic is what ethical problems does artificial intelligence pose? Now over to Michelle. I'm delighted to be here with you today. Thank you for inviting me to speak about ethical challenges posed by artificial intelligence. Let's start off with why we need ethical AI. First, it is crucial to reduce bias by identifying and using training data that is trustworthy. And secondly, using an ethical framework for AI models to protect people from harm and preserve the integrity of organizations. These organizations are operating in disruptive business environments, which are fueled by digital transformation strategies that leverage AI to personalize the user or customer experience of products and services from virtually every industry. New systems are being created by digital giants who represent some of the most innovative and technologically advanced companies in the world, many of which are coming from emerging markets in particular. More than half of the Boston Consulting Group's top innovative tech challengers have already expanded beyond their home market, and they come from countries such as China, India, Singapore, Israel, Brazil, Indonesia, Turkey, South Africa, Nigeria, there's, there's a lot of them in there and these are consistently on the top list. So Interbrand came out with a list of breakthrough brands in 2021 that leverage artificial intelligence. You can find their list on interbrand.com and search for breakthrough brands. These companies are growing fast in size and number as they reinvent their industries, allowing them to increase the scale scope and speed of their digital transformation strategies. Technology is grounded in their strategic plans to create, expand, diversify, and sustain. This is happening at an ever increasing speed and is deeply impacting every industry in how we live, work, and play. Such personalization or customization requires such companies to address the ethical challenges that impact us personally and the responsibility of companies using artificial intelligence to fuel such advancements. The Boston Consulting Group reports that 66% of customers expect companies to understand their unique needs and expectations. The marketing functions of a business, if you think about it, must embrace digital transformation and personalization. IT functions need to update legacy technology and data management systems to keep up and adopt a platform-based approach to marry the power and scalability of technology with human expertise, flexibility, and creativity. Scaling artificial intelligence can create a massive competitive advantage, but it's not enough to invest in cutting edge technologies and algorithms you need to rewire decision-making and operations to extract value and invest in human capabilities to really make it stick. Uh, BCG calls this AI at scale. And the companies that have scaled AI across the business and achieved meaningful value from their investments typically dedicate about 10% of their AI investment to algorithms, 
20% to technologies and 70% to embedding AI into business processes and agile way, ways of working. So in other words, these organizations invest twice as much in people and processes as they do in technology and they're successful doing it. So when companies underinvest in people and processes, they quickly lose momentum with artificial intelligence. New technologies have the potential to grow the economy and make society more equal and inclusive. And this is a moral imperative for us. Change is at the core of digital transformation, combining physical and digital technologies such as analytics, artificial intelligence, cognitive technologies, and what we refer to as the internet of things. Big data is the main fuel for artificial intelligence or machine learning. Algorithms and collected data can certainly have biases and unethical elements, which in turn can result in deviating from the algorithm to behave differently than we had anticipated and generate a whole unethical system, which can indeed be harmful for society. Targeted advertisement, society bias, and fake news are some examples of this. Saurabh Mishra from Analytics Vidya describes several other instances that happened in the past where an ML algorithm was misused uh, because all possible behavior of the model was not really tested thoroughly. And then the model be proved to behave in an undesirable way. And here are a few examples. The first of which is unethical facial recognition. And the US Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency unethically collected data to analyze the day-to-day -day activities of immigrant communities. So here in this example, we have the civil rights of targeted communities violated through the use of AI. Another example would be Amazon's AI recruiting tool that had a bias against female job applicants. Uh, another could be an American unemployment benefit system booked 20,000 false claims of fraud. The new system that they were using replaced their uh, COBOL system with an error rate of 93%. <laughs> so the system lacked human oversight as it searched for discrepancies in claimants files uh, leading up to that high error rate. And another example is uh, Google's hate speech detector. Uh, they used AI to identify hate speeches and ultimately exhibited a bias effect by behaving differently towards people of color. There are many more instances which may become threats to society that, that companies simply must employ ethical means to capture and act on their findings. Uh, Luc Lukides, Patil, and Mason have compiled a list of sorts in their book it's called Ethics and Data Science, and it's worth taking a look at. I'll highlight some of the questions we should be asking ourselves. So first, have we tested our training data to ensure it is fair and representative? It needs to be accurate. Uh, second, have we studied the, and understood possible sources of bias in our data? What kind of user consent do we need to collect to use the data? Have we tested for fairness with respect to different user groups? Uh, do we test and monitor for model drift to ensure our software remains fair over time? And do we have a plan to protect and secure user data? Those are some of the highlights. They have a lot more and a more comprehensive checklist for us to go through uh, in their book. So, we're basically living in a world where AI is now commonplace and there are many ethical concerns in how its use may impact and influence our lives. From a practical business lens, com companies have a social responsibility toward how they gather, interpret, and use the data being captured. Reputation erodes easily with scandals highlighted in on online news resources. And there are several ethical dilemmas that come with using AI, especially with misusing the information that you acquire. The uh, automated decisions or AI bias is one ethical challenge and the algorithms and training data may contain biases as they're generated by humans. And this causes AI systems to make unfair automated decisions. And these biases happen for two reasons. 
Firstly, developers may not even notice that they programmed in biases into AI systems. In addition, historical data may not represent the whole population accurately or fairly, and such bias may lead to discrimination of minority groups in particular. Remember how I mentioned Amazon having to shut down their recruiting tool? They had used it for a year when developers discovered the tool was penalizing women with choosing 60% male candidates as a result of historical data. So this truly mars the company's reputation. However, when you're as big as Amazon, you can take some pretty hard hits and carry on successfully. While it's nearly impossible to remove all biases due to human biases changing and morphing all the time and, and identifying new biases, uh, minimizing them should be part of companies' um, digital transformation strategies. And it's truly important for companies to practice ethical and responsible AI and removing biases in AI systems is truly necessary. Yet according to Sam Delmagani, who incidentally wrote a great article on AI ethical dilemmas, only 47%, oh, sorry, 47 of organizations test for bias in data models and human use of algorithms. Another ethical dilemma of AI is autonomous things. So these are devices and machines that work on specific tasks autonomously without human interaction. And I'm sure we could name a great number of these. The ones that come to mind immediately are likely self-driving cars, drones, and robotics. So if we look at self-driving cars as an example, the autonomous vehicle market was valued at $54 billion in 2019, and it is projected to reach $557 billion by 2026. However, autonomous vehicles pose various risks to AI ethics guidelines. People and government still question the liability and accountability of autonomous vehicles. Dil Magani gives an example of an Uber self-driving car in 2018 that hit a pedestrian who later died at a hospital. The accident was recorded as the first death involving a self-driving car. After the investigation, the Arizona State Police and the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board prosecutors decided that the company is not criminally liable for the pedestrian's death. And this is because the driver was distracted with her cell phone and police, police reports label the accident as completely avoidable. So this is quite remarkable. Currently, the greatest fear of AI is that it will increase unemployment due to all these jobs becoming automated. And for dependable, accurate data on this ethical dilemma, I recommend turning to the World Development Report from 2019 that was conducted by the World Bank. The report focuses on the future of work where Dr. Frederica Saliola and her team accurately report the fear of robots taking over jobs is unfounded. As technological innovations, they're bringing opportunity, creating new jobs, increasing productivity and improving public, public service delivery. So the pace of which has evolved quickly. Job opportunities follow such innovation and, pro and provide prospects for sustained employment. So the two forces of automation and innovation stemming from AI represent two competing forces. So if innovation outpaces automation, then we see more jobs created than jobs displaced and vice versa. Using AI to augment and amplify human talent creates companies that are more attractive to potential partnerships and offer meaningful jobs that improve the quality of life for all, where interactions with humans will remain superior. Computers are not as good as humans at abstract tasks, manual tasks, tasks requiring complex contextual information, and tasks requiring ethical judgment. Hence, the perception of AI increasing unemployment due to automation is actually an unfounded ethical dilemma, but one that, that people think of is, is indeed true and, and it's not. You don't have to look far to find more misuses of AI. 
Uh, surveillance practices limiting pr privacy is a big one. Uh, this calls to mind the saying, Big Brother is Watching You, that book called 1984 by George Orwell. It was a dystopian uh, social sci-fi model, uh, sorry, novel, pretty um, popular. Governments deploy AI for mass surveillance. Implementation of facial recognition technology into surveillance systems concerns privacy rights. So according to AI Global Surveillance Index, there are 176 countries using AI surveillance systems and the liberal democracies are major users of AI surveillance. The same study shows that 51% of advanced democracies deploy AI surveillance systems compared to 37% of closed autocratic states. However, this, does, this uh, is likely due to the wealth gap that we have between the two groups of countries. Um, another misuse of AI is the manipulation of human judgment. Mm -hmm. And it, it's that misuse of AI is such analytics, they may prove actionable insights on human behavior and abusing these analytics to, to manipulate decisions we make is of course ethically wrong. Uh, Cambridge Analytica is a good example where they sold American voters data on Facebook to political campaigns that provided assistance and analytics to the 2016 presidential camp campaigns. Information about the data breach was disclosed in 2018 and the federal and Facebook $5 billion due to its privacy violations. So now I'd like to provide some recommendations on how to navigate and minimize ethical dilemmas. Notice how I didn't say resolve ethical dilemmas, I said minimize. So there are numerous initiatives and organizations aimed at minimizing the potential negative impact of AI. For instance, the Institute for Ethics and AI at the Technical University of Munich conducts AI research across various domains such as mobility, employment, healthcare, and sustainability. Transparency is by far one of the best means to minimize these challenges. AI developers must strive to be transparent. It is an ethical obligation for them to do so. They should be transparent in a structured, accessible way as AI, as AI technology has the potential to negatively impact human experiences. Knowledge sharing can help. AI research, even if it takes place in private for profit companies, tends, tends to be publicly shared. Uh, an example could be OpenAI. It's a nonprofit AI research company. It was created by Elon Musk, uh, Sam Altman, and others to develop open source AI beneficial to humanity as a whole. Uh, Google developed TensorFlow, and that's a widely used open source machine learning library uh, to facilitate the adoption of AI. Um, AI researchers Ben Gortzel and David Hart created OpenCog as an open source framework for AI development. And Google has an AI specific blog that enables them to knowledge share as well. A second means of minimizing ethical dilemmas is to be inclusive. A vast majority of AI research is conducted by male researchers from wealthy nations. Therein lies the potential for bias. Increasing diversity of these communities may improve the model quality and reduce bias. So in inclusive is definitely a second means of minimizing um, ethical dilemmas. Explainability is another, another way uh, AI developers and businesses need to explain how their algorithms arrive at their predictions to overcome ethical issues that arise with inaccurate predictions. And explaining how conclusions were reached and what factors affected the decision is indeed important. Lastly, alignment. Alignment can minimize ethical dilemmas as well. There isn't always a legal framework adapted to AI developments modernizing legal frameworks at both country and higher levels, for example, the UN, will clearly will, will clarify the path to ethical AI development. Uh, this concludes our session on ethical dilemmas posed by artificial intelligence. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. 
Oh, thank you, Michelle. It was really insightful and thought-provoking. I have many questions, but maybe I, I will give you a couple of them. Uh, one of these questions is uh, how can we influence companies to, uh, to uh, use this digital transformation strategies? And second question, what's the worst consequences of using AI in decision-making? For sure, yeah. So um, it, as, as we hear about uh, companies misusing AI, I mean, it, it, it can really mar the reputation. And if we think about it, um, companies really have a responsibility to go ahead and make sure that they're acquiring this data in an ethically, in an ethically responsible way. And when they don't do that, it does truly harm the public as a whole and it impacts their brand and we can see that one of the resources I shared during the presentation is interbrand and it's a great resource to take a look at the the value of a brand and how it fluctuates and you could do an event study analysis to see how specific events can impact the brand value and of course you have your investors looking at this to see um, you know, what path we're going on and, and the research and development efforts. And, and in terms of what companies uh, should be doing is um, taking a look at each function. We have the Boston Consulting Group, BCG, basically saying that they invest so much more in, in people than they do the actual technology and investing in you know, these particular algorithms. So uh, decision-making has changed in this regard. Uh, AI has truly transformed the way companies uh, conduct business. And I think it's for the better. And there's so much good that can come out of, of using artificial intelligence because it's so pervasive. It impacts every industry and not just industry as a whole. It impacts us personally as consumers and people in general. It, it impacts how we live, how we work, how we play, every aspect of our lives, really. And uh, that's just going to become increasingly more important. Thank you, thank you again, um, and thank you for having been with us. Uh, I think we need to extend this series because uh, the topic of AI and the AI issues is so interesting, so uh, topical. Uh, let's hope to see you back for even more insights. <laughs> I would love to. Thank you so much for having me.